I eventually managed to get my Rock 5 Model B to boot from an NVMe drive. Embarrassingly, this was as simple as missing a checkbox on the bootloader reflashing tool, but I got it to work and it now boots from the NVMe drive really well. So the next step is to turn it into a computer that I can actually keep on my desk, without worrying about something shorting out the components on the PCB or dust collecting on the surface. The form factor of the Rock 5 Model B is Pico ITX, so while it is slightly longer than a Raspberry Pi, it's not far off fitting into one of my Raspberry Pi desktop case designs, with a few tweaks. So I opened the model app in Tinkercad and made a few changes to it, so that the Rock 5B now fits in the case vertically, with all of the primary ports accessible through the back. I also designed a small adapter which will screw onto the board and allow the power button to be pressed from outside of the case. I've added a small extension onto the bracket in the hopes that it'll pick up light from the status LED as well, allowing it to serve a dual purpose. I then designed the side panels in Inkscape to be laser cut from some clear acrylic. The main side panel has space to mount a 40mm fan directly over the heatsink on the CPU, and the opposite side panel has ventilation holes for the air to escape over the NVMe drive. It's also got four holes for some standoffs to mount the Rock 5B onto. I added the small button adapter to the acrylic design so it can be clear to pick up the LED's light. So that's the design done, now let's get the components made up. I 3D printed the case in black PLA and on its side so it didn't need any supports. While that was printing, I laser cut the side panels and button adapter from a sheet of 2mm clear acrylic. After a few hours of printing, the body of the case was finished, so we can now start putting it together. I'm going to start by reinstalling the NVMe drive. I did this after flashing it with a fresh install of Debian. Flashing the OS onto the NVMe drive is so much faster than on SSD cards that I'm used to. It took about 5 seconds to flash the image and 7 seconds to validate it. To finish off the body of the case, we need to add some M3 brass inserts to the corners for the side panels to screw into. These will make the holes more durable if we need to remove the side panels so we don't have to worry about stripping the threads. We'll just melt these into place using a soldering iron. The Rock 5 looks like it fits into the housing quite nicely, and all of the ports line up with enough clearance around them, so let's get that mounted onto the side panel. I'm going to mount it with four M2.5 by 12mm brass standoffs, along with button head screws and nuts. We need to peel off the protective film on the side panel before installing the standoffs. I'm going to try leave the outer film in place a bit longer, so it doesn't get fingerprints all over it while I'm mounting the Rock 5B. We can then place the Rock 5B onto the standoffs and secure it with some M2.5 nuts. The button adapter needs to be mounted onto the hole above the HDMI input. This was a bit of a challenge to get the screw through the back of, but I eventually managed to get it into place. I'm probably going to look at redesigning this to be mounted onto a fifth standoff through the side panel so it's a bit easier to install the adapter with just a single nut on the top to hold it in place. It needs to be moved to overlap the button while installing the side panel, so it can then be pushed through the cutout on the front of the case. We can then hold the side panel in place with four M3 by 8 mm button head screws. I'm going to remove the protective film before tightening them, otherwise some of the film might get caught underneath the screws and won't be able to be peeled off. We can then push the button adapter through the cutout and tighten the nut holding it into place. 
It seems like there's enough flex in the acrylic so that this nut can be quite tight and still won't prevent the button from being pressed. With that in place it feels like it's going to work well. It lines up with the button and LED and seems easy to push the button through the front of the case. Next let's mount our fan onto the opposite side panel. I'm going to use the M3 screws and nuts that came with the fan and I'm mounting it so that it's pushing air into the case. We can then plug the fan into the 5V and ground pins on the ROC 5B. Then close up the main side panel with another 4 M3 by 8mm button head screws. And that's the case complete. Let's get it hooked up to a power supply and monitor to try out. The ROC 5B comes on automatically when it gets power, so we don't need to push the power button the first time. It boots up really quickly from the NVMe drive. From the time you plug it in, it takes about 13 seconds to arrive at the login screen. Now let's shut it down and see if the power button works to wake it back up again. So it looks like we've got a similar problem to the Raspberry Pi with this setup. Shutting down the board doesn't remove power from the 5V pins, so the fan continues to run indefinitely. A workaround would be to use a PWM fan or use one of these easy fan modules that requires a GPIO pin to be pulled high to turn the fan on. That way when the board shuts down, the GPIO pin would turn the fan off as well. That aside, it looks like the button works correctly to wake it up. It doesn't look that bright on camera, but the button also lights up pretty well using the internal LED. Let me know what you think of the ROC 5B case in the comment section below, and let me know if you'd like to see anything added or changed in the design. As with my other case designs, I'll leave a link in the video description if you'd like to get one for your ROC 5 Model B. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.